Welcome to part three of Fixing Will's Fairbanks Power Hammer. Today's episode is sponsored by Cove Audio and their noise cancelling headphones. We've been using them for about a year and the guys in the office especially love their noise cancelling abilities. They've got super comfortable memory foam ear cushions that hold in the noise really well so people around you don't have to listen to your music while you are. You get up to 12 hours of battery life listening to music and up to 200 hours of standby time. They fold down really compact so it makes them a really good set of travelling headphones. They've even got a microphone so you can take and answer calls. They'll connect to your phone from up to 30 feet away. And if you're in a loud place, the active noise cancelling on the headphones is fantastic when you go zone in at the work at hand or listen to a good song. Right now, if you click the link in the description, you'll be getting 67% off your own pair of Cove Audio noise cancelling headphones, so please check them out and let's get back into the video. We're starting right where we left off. Will is working on making a new Pitman. That's right, I've got this piece of four inch round chucked up in the four jaw chuck, drilling, not my first off-centered hole in the lathe, but it is my first intentional off-centered hole in the lathe, and we're using a boring bar to get this out wide enough to fit in a bronze sleeve bearing. In the last episode, I made replacement toggle link number one. Time to take this block I forged in episode one and make toggle link number two. So here we are at our dimension. I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing out of the chuck. It is quite toasty. We are right at the actual dimension that we were shooting for, but as it cools down, it should hopefully lose about a thousandth of an inch or so. There we go, little warm baby. It is toasty. Oh my gosh. So now that we've got the eccentric hole bored in here, it's now time to bore ourselves a hole in here in the side for the Pittman shaft to go into, and then we need to thread it. So that's a whole lot. Let's figure ah, it out. A whole lot. Ah. Okay, we got our tab welded on here. We can now go ahead and chuck it up in the four jaw chuck and try to get it centered so that the place where we're boring our hole is this center punch mark right there. So, now we're gonna pop out the live center, throw the Jacobs chuck in, and drill all the way through. And the reason that we can drill all the way through is because we're gonna be putting a bronze bushing in here, and so the washer that's going in there is still gonna have full contact. We got it threaded in there, which is super, super exciting when you're bad at machining like I am. What we've got to do now is grind out this giant nub on the inside here. And the way that I'm gonna figure out where I need to grind off is by using spray paint as a layout fluid. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna... Wow, this almost could not have stuck any less than it did. Wow, look at that. So clear. I can see where the actual spray paint stops and that's, that's good enough. So 
while we're waiting for those welds to cool down, we're gonna start turning the next part of the Pitman assembly. What we have here, we've got the main body of the Pitman. That's pretty much done. We're waiting for the bronze bushing to show up to be able to shrink fit that in. What we're gonna do now is make this washer. And as you guys saw, this fits in between the bronze bushing and over the wrist pin. Now when you've got a washer on this side, you can tighten it down, but the Pitman itself can still move totally freely. So, we're gonna turn one of these out of this piece of three and a half inch round stock. We've got our diameter here turned down to about a thou under two inches. We're gonna start boring the hole that the wrist pin is gonna sit inside. This washer is pretty much done, so we'll have to test the fit of it to the pitman. For that, we'll have to press in the bronze bearing. Goodness gracious, it is so slippery. Good, that's exactly the way that bearing is meant to fit, eh? Well done, Will. Thank you, sir. All right, guys. So in my rush to get this done, I made a mistake. I moved a decimal place in my head. This wrist pin here is 1.130 inches. The diameter that I turned on the inside of the washer was 1.3 inches. So what I'm gonna have to do is take some plumber's pipe, turn down the outside diameter, turn down the inside diameter, and weld it in as a sleeve to take up the gap. So we've got our bearing and washer, and we've got our sleeve. And the sleeve fits inside of the washer, but it wiggles around right now, and we don't want that. So I'm gonna go ahead, and I'm gonna take the die grinder to the inside of these two lips here. I'm gonna chamfer them fairly heavily, and we're gonna take the TIG welder to it and get these things stuck together. So while those welds are cooling down, we're gonna chuck this thing up in the four jaw chuck here and get it turned down so it's a little bit more even. It's currently about 10 thou out of whack and so we're just gonna hit it really lightly and get it cleaned up. All right, so here is our Pitman cross arm system as it currently stands. We've got our wrist pin, we've got our bushing, and we have our Pitman that sits inside of the cross head. Now the biggest issue that we have right now is that the cross head, no matter how much you tighten it down, isn't clamping on to the shaft of the Pitman. And the reason for that is that when I was getting the old Pitman out, I threaded this in from the other side and basically opened it up while I was heating the back of this cross head here. So what I'm gonna do now is the exact opposite. I'm gonna get it closed up real tight and heat up this whole body here so that hopefully it'll contract a little bit and make it so that it will tighten down on the shaft of the pitman. All right guys, we got it. I just backed it off a little bit, uh, but yeah. Works like a charm, works great. Well, we're finally ready to get this thing moved partially outside so we can start putting it back together. It's so easy to move, you wouldn't believe it. So the first thing that we'll do is we're gonna go ahead and throw on 
the crank disc and crankshaft. We'll get that started and then we'll get the drive pulley in there and fully seat it. There we go. Oh, we lined up, yes! There oh. we go! Awesome. Woohoo! Sweet. Okay, so, look at this. It moves. That's wonderful. It's in there, it's keyed. I ended up dropping in the bolt in here that pushes the key into the keyway, so it's all nice and tight now. So now that we got the wheels attached on there, we're gonna clean up some parts for the brake system. So the first step is knocking this pin in here. And what this pin does is it keeps the brake from slipping. Okay, so we've got these little tabs here. And what they do is they're basically just a wear plate, a spacer that's replaceable that we pop in here and they screw into the brake disc. So now those are in there. We'll take the pulley arm right there and wowza, here we go. So what happens is as you pull down on the idler arm, it expands and it makes it so that, oh, look at that, the wheel can't move. And then you release and it spins and then it stops and then it spins. It's a very good little brake system, super, super smart. It was a really, really simple but uh, really effective brake. So I'm glad that this hammer has one. The little giant doesn't have one, so it just, kind of does whatever it wants to do. And with that, we can keep on working on the cross head down there. It finally cooled off. We'll get it cleaned up, and we'll see how that pitman fits inside of it now. So, I was just gonna easily unthread this bolt. However, we run into an issue. It's just barely moving. All right, we just PB blasted the crap out of it. We'll let that sit for a minute. On a scale of one to 28, how worried are you? 19. So as you guys saw, we had a little bit of trouble getting this bolt out of the crosshead, and that reason is very, very apparent now. The bolt actually split down the center and the threads shifted, so I guess there was some tension in there and us heating and moving it around while it was hot, I guess, completely destroyed it, which means that we need to make a new bolt. And not only that, but it messed up the threads on the inside of the crosshead there. So we need to clean those out, which is really hard because we don't have a good way to get in there. We don't have a 7 8 by 9 tap. I checked it, that's the thread that this is here. So I think what we might go ahead and do is make ourselves a 7 8 by 9 tap. So this is a tap. It's used to cut internal threads inside of a hole. This is a bar of 4140 that we're gonna chuck up in the lathe and then turn into a 7 8 by 9 tap. The first thing I'm gonna do is switch back to the three jaw chuck and then we'll start by turning it down to 25 millimeters or 110 thousandths of an inch which means that when we've cut our threads we can pop this in here and we'll be able to take a ball end mill in the mill and cut four flutes to clear out the chips as we're cutting the thread. Now we're gonna go ahead and harden it. All right, I did a quick temper on the tap and we're now ready to give it a shot. I put some oil in there and we're just gonna see if we can clean out these threads in here. Hey. I can't believe it worked. Okay, now that we got those threads cleaned out, it's time to make one of these 
out of this. This is some inch and a quarter square stock. We're gonna chuck it up in the four jaw. Let's turn ourselves down a little bolt. To grind off these corners because they're starting to hit in this part of the crosshead. So here's the dealio. First, it was too tight, and so we opened it up, and then it was too loose, so we closed it, and now it's too tight again. However, pivot fits in on this side, it just doesn't on the other side. Once it really starts to close up there, then we get caught, so we just need to reverse open it up a little bit again. Unfortunately, we are out of oxygen right now. And because we're out of oxygen, that means unfortunately that we're also out of video. That's right. Thank you all for watching. See you all very soon. Be sure to check out Cove for more than 67% off their headphones. Thank you to Cove for sponsoring this. And also, stay tuned on the Alex Steele Co. Instagram for launch and release dates of some of our upcoming drops of grinders and all that fun stuff. It's been a pleasure as always having you here. Bye-bye.